Unwind Winos. We are back for another episode of Unwind with Bondi Blue on Unwind with Tasha K. Yes, girl, a lot of y'all had so many questions about who I am. Who is this lady? Where is Tasha? Oh my God, where is Tasha? Girl, Tasha's somewhere minding her business. She needed somebody to come in and fill in. For those of y'all on the short yellow bus that ask questions that seem to have answers that you just can't get to. Lord have mercy. I was like, is this confusing? She needed, she needed to handle something. I've been here before, girl. <laughs> Catch up. I'm Bondi Blue, and you can follow me on Instagram at Bondi Blue. You can follow my YouTube page at Bondi Blue. Girl, my website, www.bondiblueshow.com. I'm also on TashaKLive.com, okay? Yes, we give y'all all of the wine behind the scenes and everything, all exclusive content, Okay, so just in case you did not know, and I know y'all still going to be asking because y'all still slow, you know, not all of y'all, not y'all, but y'all, y'all know who I'm talking about. Okay, you can go and look on any of them Instagram posts and they asking questions like it don't say unwind with Tasha K with Bondi Blue. Who is this lady? I'm Bondi Blue, baby. I'm Bondi Blue. That's who I am. So if you didn't know me, hi. How you doing? And, you know, I know a lot of y'all are fans and y'all try to act like y'all not fans, writing paragraphs, talking about, Tasha, why is she here? And then I click on your page and you follow me. So you know who I am. You know who I am. Don't front. It's okay. Be a fan, girl. It's all right. It's okay. Love me. I love you. Don't be a hater. I know a lot of y'all wish y'all was up here. I know y'all wish this was y'all job. Y'all like, damn, Tasha ain't called me to come and fill in. Yeah, well, bitch, I'm sorry, okay? It, it can't be everybody, okay? It can only be some. And right now, it's me. <laughs> so, enjoy the show. Like the video. Subscribe to my channel. Make sure y'all support Tasha K because Tasha K is on the road, girl. TashaKOnStage.com is where you can find out where she'll be on the road near you, okay? And I might pop up. I might be hosting, okay? I might pop out that bitch like, ew, okay? And give y'all something y'all could feel. Stop hating on me and just enjoy it while it lasts, okay? Now, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to get into the topics, girl. Meet Tax Geeks, your go-to accounting wizards. They're all about simplifying taxes, prep, planning, and all things accounting for you and your small businesses. With Tax Geeks, it's not just about numbers. It's about fueling your growth and securing your financial future. They're more than just accountants. They're your financial partners in success. Ready to hit your financial targets? Well, team up with Tax Geeks and watch your goals turn into reality. Meet the Browns, Glinos. Hey, okay, Miss Tina Brown. Tina Brown. Okay. Shane Brown, you ready? Yeah, yeah, ready? Now, I ain't gonna lie, like, I love Bobby Brown. You and Bobby, how close were y'all? Very close. What was it like living with Whitney? It was fun. You smoke crack with Whitney, you said? That's Absolutely. pretty. Absolutely. You don't know that? We only know Bobby and Whitney. Girl. And every time he's sitting down, he talking about Whitney. And I'm like, how as a new wife do you deal with this? Like, That's why I hit that bitch with the bottle. And it dwindled down to, dwindled down. you know, some people that dwindled down to my brother touching <laughs> three of my toes. Who, Bobby? Yes. Sure, but yes. But you know. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm just. Sure. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't hold it no more. shows like this and would like to see more with me on stage in your city well i'm coming tickets on sale right now link in the description box as well as the bio hurry up now while tickets last okay <laughs> and we're back i'm reporting live from unwind with tasha k it's your girl bondy blue i might mention that a few times because y'all kept asking who i was so i'm gonna run it into the ground Okay, follow me on Twitter, okay? Bondi Blue Rose on Twitter, okay? I might have said that wrong. By the time we get to the end of this, I'll give y'all the right one. Y'all, Twitter took my, my first page. They, they took my first page and they won't give it back. So I had to make a new one, okay? We'll get into that. But first, reporting. The Baltimore Bridge, you guys. Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore collapsed 
early Tuesday morning when a container ship crashed into it. The container trip, uh, I'm sorry, the container ship was on its way to Sri Lanka. And six people were reportedly, um, you know, killed in this collapse. And it's so sad. But the blessing about it is that they were able to get a May Day out ahead of time, which stopped traffic on both ends of the, of the bridge, which kept more people from being harmed. So that is a blessing. But there were six construction workers that were still on the bridge for whatever reason. A part of me feels like construction workers feel like they can't leave. They got to make their money. You know, they don't want to get in trouble with their boss that like to cut corners and stuff. So they got to be out here no matter what the people are saying. And I I just, I feel really bad for those people that had to stay on that bridge or felt that they needed to stay on that bridge and it collapsed and now six people are gone and they have to, you know, they have to get down there in that water and search and find those people. It's so unfortunate, y'all. This is catastrophic. And to be honest, I thought that somebody had blew the bridge up the way it fell. But no, a huge, basically 1,000 foot container ship ran into the bridge after it lost power. Now, here, here's my, my issue with this container ship losing power. This container ship is called the Dolly. And the Dolly was created and put into rotation in 2016. And in June, there was some issues with its inspection. Apparently, it had issues with, it found deficiencies in propulsion, and auxiliary machinery. And for everybody that does not know, the issue that caused the power to go out was a propulsion issue. So I'm wondering what the hell is going on and who's going to get fired? Because it seems to me that if the ship went through 27 inspections and still was able to go out and run into this bridge, after it had these same issues, it seems as if somebody's cutting corners. As if it seems as if somebody doesn't care about regulations. You know, people like Trump and Candace Owens that like to, you know, ignore regulations so that people can go and make their money. Y'all know that was one of the reasons why Candace told y'all that Trump was such a good option for a president because her her little cousin was trying to get a food truck and you know Trump wants to pull back regulations and y'all think that shit is good until you have tomain poisoning. And look at this. You think re pulling back regulations is good until a container ship loses power and demolishes a whole damn bridge in Baltimore? But, you know, y'all think she's smart and I'm dumb because she hit all her R's extra hard and shit. Right? That's what y'all think? Okay, continue to think that. Either way, this is obviously an issue of this container ship should not have been on the water. Somebody's messing up. Somebody's going to pay because they're going to have to rebuild this whole bridge. Please know the government and everybody involved is going to investigate to find out what happened. But prayers to the family of the six people that were lost in the collapse. And I believe two people were injured. So prayers out to everybody that was involved. It is a blessing that not more people were harmed. But this is why cutting corners and feeling like we need to roll back regulations is not a good thing. Because it puts the public at risk. Okay? And that's what I got to say about it. Okay? Sitting up here acting like, I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay? Listen, I got the Google like everybody else. Now, let's go ahead and move on to Anthony Mackie, y'all. My fellow New Orleanian. Okay? When I tell y'all, New Orleans is not a real place. <laughs> it is, but it ain't. Okay? And when I say that, I mean celebrities really think they can come to New Orleans, live in New Orleans, be walking around, you know, in a NOLA, and nobody's going to say anything. And normally that's how it goes. Like, New Orleans is full of service industry people, full of people that work around celebrities, so you know not to be doing the most. You're not fanning out over nobody. Plus, New Orleans people, we very egotistical. Like, we know how to run game on a nigga. We know how to talk, okay? So we ain't about to get bucked up behind nobody. Listen, man, I don't care about that, man. Listen, I get up and take a sh every day just like that nigga do, okay? Like, that's how a lot of New Orleans people would feel if they saw Anthony Mackie. But a lot of us already know he don't like his fans this man had already proved proven to y'all a whole bunch of times 
he don't really like y'all, okay? He likes to act, but he don't like none of y'all, okay? Well, a fan was highly disappointed because she must have missed the first few times that he gave his fans his to kiss, okay? But let's hear what the fan had to say, Jasmine. So I just met Anthony Mackie, and let me just say, rudest human being alive. So I live in New Orleans, I'm here for spring break, Apparently, Anthony Mackey lives here, too. He's I pulled up to a gas station. Here, Anthony Mackey comes in this huge fucking truck, all blacked out, all fucking sleek, windows down. So it's like, also, if you don't want people to come up to you and fucking say how much they appreciate your work, why the fuck are all your windows down and you're blasting music, smoking a fucking cigar? Right so there. I park my car. Because he live in his life. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Girl, I'm sorry. I know he rude, but he living his life. How dare you feel like him having his window down and, and you know, being a big timer, okay? Listen, rolling through with the big wheels and everything, windows down, living his good life. Girl, what you mean? Why is he living his life if he don't want you to come running up to him at a gas station? Girl, what? That's not the place for fans to run up to nobody getting ready to pump my gas i see anthony mackie across the fucking lot i gently walk up to him gently being like oh you my god i'm so sorry to bother because i know celebrities are on time but i know not. celebrities got shit to do i understand that so i walk up being very 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 respectful very 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 open-minded being like hey i'm so sorry to bother you tell me why anthony mackie did this no no. no to my face no and then just went back to what he was doing having me standing there i was standing there in front of anthony mackie being like oh should i should i leave like should i should i go when yeah. i tell you <laughs> yeah. all i wanted to do was walk up to that man first of all thank you for his time for even looking at me and then saying how much i thought appreciated his work and that was it that was it i just wanted to be like Hey, Anthony Mackey, like, it's so nice to meet you. Like, I'm so, like, uh, your work is actually phenomenal. I'm so glad I got to meet you. Like, have an amazing day. That was it! That was it! That was all I wanted! But these fucking celebrities make it seem like we're fucking roaches and rats. Bitch, I'm pumping my, the fucking, I'm at the same gas station as you, bitch! Baby, we on the same level playing field. <laughs> no, we're not. I'm pumping the same gas you pumping right now. And you can't even look at me. Even if he was like, oh, like, hi, like, shush, like, you know, like, I'm on the, I'm on the low right now, but it's so nice to meet you. That would have been amazing. But I get a hand to the face. I get fucking stranded looking stupid. Anthony Mackey, the rudest celebrity. The rudest celebrity. You make celebrities look bad. You do. Girl, you making fans look bad. Why are you this thirsty for this man's attention? Let's start there. If you were at the gas station pumping gas at him, which makes you feel y'all are, are on level playing field, then why are you running up to him trying to talk to him and just hope for him to look at you? Because he's not trying to run up to you. He's not looking at you. As soon as he gave you the brick wall, okay, I'm going to give y'all 90s. Okay, brick wall. <laughs> Skirt. Okay, he gave you the Jamie Foxx skirt. Okay, as soon as that happened, you should have been like, and with that being said, I'm going to fall back. Okay, shout out the blue. That should have been it. And with that being said, I'm going to fall back. Okay, and you walk away. And then you be like, damn, that nigga ass, huh? All right, then, that's cool, you know what I'm saying? I just know I can't be a fan of this nigga. You don't do all of this extra. Because at the end of the day, ma'am, you are not entitled to anybody's attention. Or energy. I'm sorry to tell you. I don't care how many times you saw him and she hate me. Because Lord knows I saw him a bunch of times and she hate me. I don't know if y'all seen she hate me, child. But that's a reason to run up behind Anthony Mackie when you see him somewhere. Is his role in she hate me. He was wearing them, girl, he was wearing the lesbians out in that movie. <laughs> okay, banging everybody out. Okay, I'm sorry. That was one of my favorite movies with him. But it doesn't matter. If you don't want to get played, then you have to have self-respect and ego okay and a part of your ego is recognizing that sometimes celebrities ain't worth your attention either 
they another human just like you another human. I'd have saw that nigga and be like, oh, because I've seen him out before. Okay, y'all, if y'all don't know, I know y'all was speculating. I am from New Orleans. I do live in New Orleans. They flew me the fuck out. Okay, they, they flies me to Fort Lauderdale to come and sit at Tasha's desk when she got shit to do. Okay, that's how this go. All right? Just in case anybody's confused. The girl got something to do, she holler at me. I come through. Okay? But normally, I'm out here in, in these New Orleans streets. So I didn't ran up on him before. I didn't seen him out a few times. Okay? And, and I saw how he got down. He ain't cool like that. He not. So if I see him, you just another. And that's how everybody else need to treat Anthony Mackie. Like he just another nigga. Stop making him feel special. You ain't special, nigga. You just an actor. That's it. Cash down. What's wrong with y'all? Y'all didn't act. Like I told, look, I told y'all on Instagram Live I was coming on here with an attitude today. I told y'all I was coming on here with attitude. Man, I saw the way y'all was talking to Cash Doll. And this is what makes me realize people really, y'all be online miserable, bored, ain't got nothing to do, and feel like trolling people you're low-key obsessed with. Because I ain't following Cash Doll like that. Not nearly enough to roll up on this lady's Instagram like, bitch, your stomach look weird. I don't know what's wrong with her belly, but... The baby in there look weird. I don't know what's going on. Like, y'all got this lady having to defend herself to y'all because y'all want to talk bad about the way her stomach look. Like, that's so weird to me. She is if, if anticipating. Let me get that word. If anticipating. That means she is with child. And y'all are grown women. Literally, grown women that have probably had children yourself online talking to Cash Doll. Somebody said, Cash Doll belly looks so weird to me. I don't know. Cash Doll is pregnant and emotional and hormonal. She said, y'all hoes find something wrong with anything. Like, let me just be pregnant. Okay. Somebody said, why are you so upset, lady? Like, it wasn't that deep. Now y'all famous mother be in y'all damn feelings too much. No, you think you can say anything to anybody and they not going to respond to you because they famous or they got more followers. But famous people are people too. And if you think you can't get this clap back, you got cash doll and me. Because y'all do this to me, too. Y'all feel like y'all can say anything to people. And when they respond back to you just because they got a legion of fans that might clap on your ass, too, now I'm being a bully. No, you want to comment some, some negative stuff on a public platform, then you might get cursed out by somebody. Don't tell nobody, oh, it wasn't that deep. If it wasn't that deep, why the f*** you talking to me? If it wasn't that deep, what you talking to me for? Okay, Cash Doll went to explain how she going through it. She always hungry. She can't sleep no more. She got to pee every second. And y'all on the internet aggravating her. And she, Girl, look at the, how this girl responded. B, who fault is that? I spoke my mind like you do all the time. So please. And it wasn't like that. Girl, you probably somewhere jealous. Somewhere mad. Somewhere sleeping on the mattress. Girl, somewhere trying to figure out how you going to turn a dollar into a nickel. <sighs> I don't like y'all online sometimes. Y'all feel too free behind y'all keyboards to be talking shit to people that if you was in their face, you'd be kissing their ass. And I don't like that, okay? Pump faking, trying to act like you all hard and shit behind the keyboard. But if if, if Cash Doll was in your face, you'd be, oh, oh, my God, can I get a picture? Can I get a picture? Oh, my God, I saw Cash Doll. Fucking fans. Let's move on. Ashanti, another pregnant person. Well... Child, listen, she was trying to keep it under wraps. And I know a lot of y'all felt like what, what Ashanti is doing is the same as what Holly and DDG did. That is not the same. You ain't seen Nelly nowhere posting uh, uh, Ashanti at the house looking pregnant in the background of a video somewhere on live. You ain't never seen him post a sonogram talking about April Fools, okay? You've never seen Nelly do any of those things, and you've also never seen Ashanti respond to anybody saying anything about her being pregnant. She don't get online and gaslight y'all and tell y'all, what are you talking about? I love my black nose. Bitch, you pregnant. Stop playing with me. I can see you, bitch. I have eyes. I have eyes, bitch. You can't come around us looking pregnant and then talk about, oh, my God, I'm so offended. Girl, your nose is over here. What are you talking about? 
Okay? But either way, y'all know how Ashanti get down. Ashanti be out there naked. Okay? And Ashanti been wearing these big ass t-shirts at all of her shows. We let y'all know she covering up the ang. But now, now we got the proof. Play the video. Please allow the show to go 100% perfect. Let the vocals be airtight. No technical difficulties. Keep us all safe. Let the cues be on point. Let the crowd be into it. Please protect me. Let me remember everything. Let the dancers hit everything. Protect my baby. Let the crowd be into it. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we don't know who told on the press circle. <laughs> we don't know who told on the press circle. But somebody told on the press circle somebody recorded the damn press circle and released it to the blogs when i tell y'all y'all ain't shit <laughs> some of y'all friends out here y'all really ain't shit ain't that messed up you can't even trust that people gonna keep your press circle under wraps well at least now we know what's going on with her we know that ashanti is out here and for Nelly. And, you know, that's good for her. Y'all know she's in her 40s. You know what I'm saying? She's been waiting all of this time, you know, and he had to go out and soil his royal oats, and now they're back together. We'll see how it all works out. But what we do know is they probably going to make a cute little baby that's going to be well taken care of. So congratulations to Ashanti and Nelly. We can't wait to see, you know, the little, the little baby with the little hand or whatever y'all going to post when the baby get here. Okay, prayers up to him. Well, you guys, what, what we at with it? Hold up. Holly Berry? Okay, hold up, because I, I was all out of order. But we got to talk about Holly Berry, y'all. This is some embarrassing-ass stuff. I said, child, did Holly Berry have sex? Never mind. I was going to bring up Usher. I'm not going to get into it. Anyway, Holly Berry is detailing the bizarre way she learned she was in paramenopause, meaning that she was entering menopause, meaning she's coming to the end of being able to okay, we talking about, we talking about the, the reproductive organs down here, okay, so during Proper Daily's fourth a day of unreasonable conversation summit Monday, the actress had a candid conversation with the first lady, Dr. Jill Biden, about menopause and women's health. The 57-year-old shared that she learned she was perimenopause after her doctor mistook her symptoms for herpes. Perimenopause refers to the time where the body starts to make its natural transition to menopause, which marks the end of a woman's productive years. She said, first of all, my ego told me that I was going to skip perimenopause, she began. I'm in great shape. I'm healthy. I managed to get myself off of insulin and manage my diabetes since I'm 20. Girl, I didn't even know Holly Berry had diabetes. I didn't even know that. So that makes one think, oh, I can handle menopause. I'm going to skip that whole thing. I was so uneducated about it at the time. She explains that when she was 54, she met the man of her dreams and started dating Grammy-winning musician Van Hunt. We've seen him and his hats and her all on the internet. They be cute, especially after all of the disrespectful white men she's been in, you know, relationships with. You know, after, after a white man you didn't let hunt you and put a baby in you, call you N-word, girl, that's traumatic. I don't know if I could ever trust another white man again after that. Both of them? Mm-mm. Too much. Sharing details about her sex life, the Oscar winner recalled having extreme pain after intercourse one day, so she immediately visited her doctor. She said, I feel like I have razor blades in my coochie. She said vagina, but I'm going to say coochie. I run to my gyno, and I say, oh, my God, what's happening? It was terrible, she recalled, teasing that she has no shame sharing her story because it can help other women know because there's a lot of y'all old, you know, it's a lot of y'all old hoes that watch Tasha. So y'all might want to make sure you don't have herpes and, you know, it's perimenopause because I know a lot of y'all might be out here throwing that cooch around and in those 50s. You know what I'm saying? Cougar cooch, just all out here hot looking for somebody young to bend the back. You know, and, and you might think one of these young boys then gave you something, but old girl, go to the doctor before you, you know, key his car or mess up his tires or call the other woman he's sleeping with and tell him that he gave me herpes, girl. It may not be that. Okay, she says it was terrible. She recalled teasing that she has no shame sharing her story because it can help other women. He said, you have the worst case of herpes I've ever seen. I'm like, herpes? I don't have herpes. I'm trying to figure out what herpes look like to this doctor. Because the last time I checked, herpes come with like, you know, genital warts, pus, it hurt, 
child. I knew a uh, I knew a white girl one time that got uh you know herpes, and when I tell you, she used to tell me how terrible that shit was, cause she couldn't get it down. They put her on all of the prescriptions, and it would not, you know, the flare wouldn't go back down. It kept flaring up, you know, cause herpes flares ups and downs now. Okay, so I'm like, if I'm looking at my coochie and I don't see nothing wrong with my coochie, how are you gonna tell me I got herpes? Like, girl, herpes, you could tell. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, you know, if it's the worst case. Barry says she immediately confronted Hunt about it. Child, she blamed, she blamed, she blamed him. <laughs> what I told y'all, what I told y'all, don't blame your man. Talk to your doctor first, okay? Get tested first. However, the couple later both tested negative for the sexually transmitted disease. I realized after the fact that it is a symptom of perimenopause, the actress said, noting that dryness is a symptom of the transitional period. Let me tell y'all, y'all gonna stop playing about the lube. Get the lube. OK, stop feeling like, oh, no, because I'm water down there. Bitch, get the lube. <laughs> stop playing with yourself, especially if you're trying to do a lot. You know what I'm saying? Because you could be all watered up in an hour in. It's like, yeah, we should have we should have brought the lube. <laughs> My doctor had no knowledge and didn't prepare me. Can you imagine being that rich with a doctor and he don't know the difference between herpes and perimenopause? That's insane, y'all. That's why you have to take care of your own body. That's why you have to know what's going on with your coochie above everybody. Because these doctors don't always know what the hell they talking about. She was like, that's when I knew. Oh, my gosh. I've got to use my platform. I have to use all of who I am. And I have to start making a change and a difference for other women. Barry ended the conversation asking the audience to help us change the way culture views women at this stage of our life. And I, I appreciate her for this, okay? Um, I want everybody to make sure that if you are in the perimenopause age range and, and you finish having sex and, and it hurt, I want you to go and take STD tests before, you know, you go and accuse your old man of anything, okay? <laughs> Girl, who knows what type of argument them people had behind that. Anyway, y'all, we're going to take a quick little break, okay? Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Bondi Blue. I'm Bondi Blue on YouTube, just in case you forgot or you came in late. So don't forget to follow me. And don't forget that Tasha is on tour, TashaKOnStage.com. Roll a break. Meet Tax Geeks, your go-to accounting wizards. They're all about simplifying taxes, prep planning, and all things accounting for you and your small businesses. With Tax Geeks, it's not just about numbers, it's about fueling your growth and securing your financial future. They're more than just accountants, they're your financial partners in success. Ready to hit your financial targets? Well, team up with Tax Geeks and watch your goals turn into reality. Meet the Browns, Winos. Hey, okay, Miss Tina Brown. Tina Brown. Okay. Shane Brown, you ready? Yeah, yeah, ready? Now, I ain't gonna lie, like, I love Bobby Brown. You right. and Bobby, how close were y'all? Very close. What was it like living with Whitney? It was fun. You smoke crack with Whitney, you said? That's Absolutely. pretty. Absolutely. You don't know that? We only know Bobby and Whitney. Girl. And every time he's sitting down, he talking about Whitney. And I'm like, how as a new wife do you deal with this? Like, That's why I hit that bitch with the bottle. And it dwindled down to, it dwindled down. you know, some people that- It dwindled down to my brother touching three of my toes. Who, Bobby? Yes. Sure, but- Yes. But, you know. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I can't hold it no more. Meet Tax Geeks, your go-to accounting wizards. They're all about simplifying taxes, prep planning, and all things accounting for you and your small businesses. With Tax Geeks, it's not just about numbers, it's about fueling your growth and securing your financial future. They're more than just accountants, they're your financial partners in success. Ready to hit your financial targets? Well, team up with Tax Geeks and watch your goals turn into reality. Risa Tisa unveiled a load of videos. Who the fuck did I marry? 400 million views talking about y'all. Y'all, ex husband. Marisa Tisa, ex wife, who straight line to y'all, it's completely false. Now, Latoya, a lot of people have been reaching out and mm -hmm. they've been wanting to hear your side. When you're dealing with this sort of trickery, and that's what I call it, it's like you being bamboozled, right? When a person comes into your life and they're constantly bamboozling you, especially like when you've been through trauma and things of that nature, you want to believe so badly that this is the truth. Legion really led 
y'all down a rabbit hole. He used to talk to this dude on the phone like every day. And his name was Miguel, right? Two gentlemen that looked out for me, my mom and dad passed away. They became brothers to me, which is Elgin and Miguel. These are the guys that I would talk to in the morning time. Miguel doesn't even exist. Uh oh no. Miguel's not even a real person. Oh no. He was wearing a fucking bulletproof vest, walking around the neighborhood as security of the apartment complex. Legion. This is in Ennett and Jonesboro, Georgia. Your it's mom funny. talked about him walking around the neighborhood at night. He was using his dad's badge, acting like the police. He's stopping the game beggars and he is patting them all the way down. He was only doing it just to fill just on to them. Just to fill on them, because he didn't work for these people. He had a whole different job. <laughs> Legion. All the cars that he promised me, they're actually on Facebook with my name on them, right? That he never bought. It's a said that she had, right, he, she but, was promised cars as well too. But he literally has, I have screenshots right, of the actual post that this lunatic actually put my name in it, tagged me, said, come outside, I have your I have your anniversary present. So where's the car? It never got bought. I was at the station and he acted like he got the a Christian phone call. The Christian radio station. Yes. Okay. And he was on the phone like, hey bro, what's up? And then the phone rang and it was my mama. She just really just kind of opened the door to something that I wasn't even prepared for. Here I am thinking that we're just dealing with a pathological liar, an alleged and I, child like, molester. She, like she said, I don't want to start crying because I don't want my makeup to trip, but every fiber in my being, I'm not a violent person, but don't touch my kids. Whore of a person. That's the lot of my childhood gone, you know? Did it cause problems between you and your mom? If you enjoy shows like this and would like to see more with me on stage in your city, well, I'm coming. Tickets on sale right now. Link in the description box as well as the bio. Hurry up now while tickets last, okay? <laughs> yes. Make sure y'all go to Tasha K on stage to get your tickets for the next show. It is really a good time. Tasha is hilarious. The skits had me dying. Make sure y'all get y'all tickets and check it out. And plus, if you are a fan of mine, if you're a bonbon, if you are a wino that, that is also a bonbon, make sure that y'all get y'all tickets because I might show up, okay? Now, let's go ahead and get into the next topic. If Young Metro don't trust you, I'm going to shoot you. Hey, listen. The niggas is arguing over women. I don't care what they say. I ain't got no money. Listen. I'm sorry. It's sitting right here, and that's just what I wanted to do. Okay. Um, Princess, <laughs> Princess Diana is a song. Okay? It's a song. And allegedly, it is after this young woman here. First of all, let me go ahead and explain what's going down. This woman says that Drake and Future are not beefing over her. If y'all did not know, Metro Boomin and Future came out with a new album called We Don't Trust You. And this album is basically a diss towards Drake. And y'all know Drake and Future used to be like this, okay? Two overly emotional, problematic pussy monsters, okay? Th these two men right here, okay? They was friends and fuckery. And now they're not friends anymore because allegedly on Drake's 2022 album for all the dogs, Scary Hour Edition, he had a song called What Would Pluto Do? And in the song, he talks about how allegedly whatever woman he was messing around with was also messing around with the homeboy. And the homeboy allegedly is future. So everybody has been thinking that this beef that's been going on for the past two years between two of y'all's faves, Drake and Future, is all because of this less than melanated young woman here. And she came out and decided to tell her side of things somewhat. Let's, let's go. Who the f*** said I was black? I'm very much not black. I'm very much Colombian. I know black. I'm Colombian. I don't want to be black, babe. Nobody's beefy, don't worry. I'm not that important. I'm just a regular girl. We glad you know. I'm just a regular person. It ain't about me. Okay. I don't trust her. Look her I don't need to address or clear anything up because those who know, know, and that's all that matters. Yeah, no? Then what you talking to us for? So. And guess what? People are going to want to believe what they want to believe. So it doesn't matter what I clear up. Nigga, it. 
Nigga doesn't care. He's laughing at this. He literally don't give a f He's not going nowhere. I don't know who thought he was going somewhere. Comments off my life. So I could get on live like I used to, like a normal person. I don't work at the club anymore. So, and no, my name is not Amber either. There's nobody named Amber. I'm a job. Who the said I was black? I'm very much not black. I'm very much Colombian. I don't want to be black, babe. My man just doesn't want me working at the club anymore, so that's why I haven't been there. Because I could talk however I want. Yep, I'm mid. Mid as f. That's what I'm saying. I don't know what the hype's about. I don't know either, but I would like to tell you there's a difference between ethnicity and race and nationality. There are differences, my love. If you are Colombian, that is your nationality. You can be black and be Colombian, but it is given. I know, I know, I know black, I Dominican. I know black, I Dominican, darker than me. We get it. We, we know y'all try to pretend like black means African-American. Y'all know what the hell we mean. <laughs> it means somebody mama black, somebody daddy black. But girl, we don't want you to be black. But we would like you to refrain from talking about my nigga. My nigga. Like, hi, it's, hi, it's my nigga. And you not black. You no black. Don't try to be in it if you ain't in it. Don't try to be in it if you ain't in it. Say you're a man. My man, my man, my man. Do that one. But don't say my nigga. I ain't like that. But listen. I know she's saying it's not about her, and it's not about her because it's really not about her. Like, nobody cares about her. They, they don't care about her, but what they do care about is feeling like they're not the top dude. And Drake is, like, you can't tell me that Drake is not low-key jealous of Future because he wants to be Future, when really, he's Aubrey. He's Aubrey, you know what I'm saying? He was on Degrassi, all right? He got a butterface white porn star pregnant. Like, he's not the guy that everybody thinks he is. That's why he has to go and get plaits and, you know, go get faded up with little hearts on the side because he has to show y'all that he's a part of the black community so he can keep getting y'all money and getting y'all ends, okay? But I, I didn't peep Drake a long time ago. I know Future is, you know, the whore of Babylon out here with all of these children and everything. But Drake, Drake is a perpetrator. Drake is somebody that wishes he was more black so that he could get y'all money. And then he wishes that he was white again so he can escape into his whitedom. Okay, escape into the whitedom. Okay, I don't know these niggas. Okay, that's what he wants to do. That's what I feel. That's why I don't really like him. But you know, they sell, okay, they used to be the big three. Him, Drake and uh, J. Cole, I think. I think they used to be the big three. It's Kendrick? Yes. Oh, I love me some Kendrick and J. Cole. Honestly, I can't believe the light-skinned guys are linking up. Like, it seems like J. Cole and Drake are, you know, going against Future and Kendrick. Y'all heard that song, Child. Kendrick killed the shit out of Future on his own song. I was listening to the song, and I was like, this what Future's still doing? Future, Future just came in half sleep on that track. He don't really care. And then Kendrick came on there punching people in the face with his words and shit. You know, it was a good song. They make good music. They do. Everybody makes good music. They're just problematic. I love the way they made y'all think they love the women. And then as soon as they got you hoes locked in, nice nah, fuck y'all. And it's for all of the dogs. <laughs> they a mess, girl. But I absolutely think it's probably over Coochie. I do. I do think that. All right, y'all. Let's move on. Russell Simmons. Y'all, Russell Simmons thought he was living his best life out there in Bali. Son thought that he wasn't gonna, he wasn't gonna have to reap what he sold. He thought that nobody was gonna ever say anything again about him assaulting women as long as he stayed his ass in Bali. Well, guess what? He got served. Oh, yes. Hold up. Let me pull it up so I can make sure I'm telling y'all the right stuff because y'all know how y'all like to tell us we lying about everything. Russell Simmons was reportedly caught off guard when he was served in Bali earlier this month. The reported serving in question is in connection with a defamation lawsuit filed in February by Drew Dixon, whose music industry career includes times as an exec for Def Jam. 
Dixon, who previously accused Simmons of sexual assault, sued over remarks made in a December 2023 interview for In Depth with Graham Bass Bensinger. In the interview, Simmons denied multiple allegations against him. He said he ain't do it, y'all. He said they lying on him. He said, I ain't do nothing to none of these hoes, okay? I don't believe him. Why are you running to Bali if you didn't do anything to anybody? You know what I'm saying? Why are you, why are you escaping to a country that doesn't have extradition? Talk to us. Tell us. Simmons was served at the Goddess Bali Health, and I might be saying that wrong, uh, Bali Health and Wellness Resort on March 5th, according to a report from All Hip Hop, citing recent legal docs. Notably, Simmons is the founder and investor of Goddess Bali Health and Wellness. So this was his spa that he was at. And he really thought his security had him together. But apparently the server was very smart about it, acted as if he was trying to see about the hotel spa situation, kind of sat down to eat, waited around, saw Russell sitting having a meeting, and then walked over to him and gave him <laughs> This is for you. Okay, Russell was so mad, and he called security. He was shocked to his core. He says, I vehemently deny all these allegations, he said at the time. Let me tell you something. I don't believe nothing he's saying. You know why I don't believe nothing that Russell Simmons say? Well, first of all, too many people have said it. I also feel like when you have a certain amount of power in Hollywood or in the music industry, you probably have taken advantage of people because you know you can. Okay? Also, his tongue is too heavy for me. Have y'all ever heard him talk? Th -th -th -th. I can't trust nothing that he say because that tongue is too damn heavy, okay? And it's something about you rap moguls. You rap moguls really like to steal the coochie. <laughs> y'all like to just be out here grabbing them, okay, like our former and maybe future president told y'all to do. He told y'all to be out here grabbing the girls' coochies and everything. And, and it seems as if a lot of y'all live by those rules, <laughs> A lot of y'all really like to be out here taking advantage of your position. And I think that is Russell Simmons, the man that if he wants you, he knows who he is. So he'll try to have you. He will. He'll try to take advantage of the situation. Um, we'll see what happens. We'll see if he actually has to come back to the States in order to pay for his alleged crimes against humanity. Don't trust him just because he's doing yoga, y'all. Don't trust him because he up there, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Don't trust none of that, okay? Because a lot of those people over there, child, I didn't found out something. What, the Dalai Lama? The Dalai Lama it, it, over there with the young girls? And the young boys, okay? So you can't be out here trusting nobody that's pump faking, acting like they, they meditating and all of that with heavy tongues, you know, with no shoes on and shit, okay? I, you can't trust them now. They might try to steal your coochie. Be safe, okay? Now, <sighs> rap moguls. Rap moguls that is getting caught up, y'all. Let's go ahead and give y'all the update everybody's been waiting on, okay? Sean Diddy Combs denied the meritless accusations waged against him as he spoke out for the first time following Homeland Security's raid on his homes in Los Angeles and Miami on Monday. Yesterday, there was a gross overuse of military-level force as search warrants were, ex were executed at Mr. Combs' residence. His attorney, Aaron Dyer, said Tuesday in a statement provided to Fox News Digital. There is no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Mr. Combs was never detained but spoke to and cooperated with authorities. The unprecedented ambush paired with an advanced coordinated media presence leads to a premature rush to judgment for Mr. Combs. Is it? Is it a premature rush to judgment? I know there are so many black people that have been online making this a black people thing, and I really want y'all to stop. What did Cat Williams say? We on the light, we on the side of light, and the other side is the other side. Yeah, it's about right and wrong. And I cannot stand that there are so many of y'all that all of a sudden turn into, well, I can't judge him. I've sinned, so I can't judge him. Really? Have you taken advantage of people consistently and without fail for the past 30 years? Because if you haven't done that, this is not comparable. All right? He did that shit. Okay? What 50 said, if they say he did that shit, he did that shit. 
he did that shit, y'all. This is surveillance video of his home after they raided and they took his computers and, and other technology. And I told y'all when we talked about this on Monday, what, what it really is, okay? And of course, Suge Knight, Candace Owens, everybody wants to tell y'all that, oh, you know, they're really just going there to get evidence on bigger people because Diddy had evidence on bigger people. And I told y'all that. He's following the Hugh Hefner model. You have parties, you record people in compromising situations, and you use the recordings in order to get away with all of your illegalities like trafficking girls. Okay, so this is another thing that's been going on, which is why we get to the whole situation with Young Miami. But wait, we ain't going to get to that yet because we also need to talk about the fact that his drug mule um, was also arrested during this time coming off his plane. Hold up, let me make sure I have the young man's name Correct. Brendan Paul, former Syracuse basketball player, was arrested. OK, apparently he had cocaine and marijuana candy on him that allegedly he was supposed to be picking up to bring to Diddy. He's seen hanging around Diddy over the years. And it is really weird when a young white man like this is hanging around Diddy. OK, so it's a lot going on just because they did not arrest Diddy today or yesterday doesn't mean Diddy's not going down. OK, because to me, it just seems like they're just trying to make sure that they connect all of the dots. As of right now, it's unclear if the arrests and raids are connected. They are. But Brendan was named in the sex trafficking lawsuit against Diddy as the person who allegedly supplied the mogul's drugs. And this was said beforehand. Before this whole raid situation went down, it was already said in Lil Rod's um, uh, court documents that this man was the person that was handling the pink cocaine such as they say child I, I had to google i was like girl what the hell is pink cocaine speaking of pink cocaine young miami come to the front young miami come to the front my girl so was touring with jt and making subpar rap music on good beats really that hard was it really that much work that you decided instead that you were going to become a uh, uh, girl, <laughs> a sex worker for Diddy. Is that right, Carisha? Well, you know, like I told y'all, the people in Miami say that's that's the stock she come from. I'm like, well, we going to find out if she really a bottom bitch because her name is involved in a lot of this as a sex worker. Hold up. Let me make sure I got it for y'all. Earlier this week, music producer Lil Rod amended the bombshell $30 million sexual assault lawsuit he filed against Diddy in February. In the fresh information added to the suit, Rodney Jones claims Diddy has harassed him and his family since he made his accusations public. And you can believe that. that that's the type of time Diddy <laughs> is on. If you've listened to the things that people have said, They've been threatened to stay quiet when y'all always want to ask, why now? Why are they talking about it now? Well, they're talking about it now because they probably feel the, the, the safest to do so at this point. And shout out to Cassie, because if it wasn't for Cassie, I don't think anybody would have felt safe enough to put it out there. And shout out to Cassie's husband. Ain't it crazy how the white man had to set her free? <laughs> girl the flip of that that's how you know this is not about color at the end of the day okay he also added cuba gooding jr to the situation as another defendant accusing the actor of sexual abuse and molestation and anybody that's been paying attention to to this fool ever since he played oj simpson he ain't been right You'll see him out in public. He's also had sexual assault cases with women. I mean, there was video of him feeling up on women and all of that, and I think somehow he still got away with it. I wonder how. I wonder who he's friends with that might have evidence on the right people to get him out of situations. I wonder. Well, according to new reports, the additional 25 pages of information also named Young Miami as someone who was once tasked with providing Diddy with a drug substance called pink cocaine per a medical website, Tusi or Tucci, also known as pink cocaine, is a combination of pink food coloring, strawberry flavoring, ketamine, caffeine, and MDMA. Yeah, y'all need y'all cocaine to taste like strawberries? Okay, that's some real, you know, that's some luxury drug use, right? 
So have we not heard about the fentanyl and how just like a little like dot size of fentanyl can have your ass dead? Okay, can have your ass gone from this earth? And y- y'all really out here playing around with that shit? Like, that's crazy to me, y'all. That's crazy. After what happened to, what was it, Michael? What was his name? The actor from uh, The Wire and all of them good shows. You know what I'm saying? I forgot his last name. But a- at one point, it was so many celebrities and actors and people that were dying from fentanyl overdoses. And y'all are really out here putting ketamine and, and the fentanyl and all of that in the cocaine. Girl, y'all ain't trying to live. Rodney Jones says in his suit that during rehearsals for a performance, Diddy requested the synthetic drug from his purported drug mule, Brendan Paul. However, when Paul realized he forgot to pack Diddy's alleged drug of choice, the businessman chief of staff, Christina Corum, contacted Young Miami to bring the pink cocaine with her to the event, according to legal documents. So homegirl was just bringing something from the house. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they made it seem like young Miami was, stick, was sticking cocaine in her coochie and getting on planes. But apparently she just she just brought he she brought the stash from the house. OK, uh, the lawsuit reportedly notes plaintiff and the Combs Rico Enterprise were rehearsing for something in the Westville in Virginia. Plaintiff Jones personally witnessed Mr. Combs do a few lines of coke in his dressing room. And we all know, have y'all ever seen him on Instagram live? Have y'all ever seen him dancing for no reason and shit? Diddy's almost 60. Where y'all think he get that energy from? Sucking it from the lives of the children of Salem, but also from doing all of these drugs, child, these designer synthetic drugs. Um... So, yes, uh, defendant Sean Combs wanted Tucci, but Brendan forgot it. So defendant Christina Coram contacted young Miami, who then brought it on the private jet from Miami. Oh, she was flying across the state lines with it. Damn. But it wasn't in a coochie the way we thought at first. The suit also reportedly expresses that people close to Diddy are often required to secure, transport, and distribute illegal substances. Y'all, this is how you get a RICO charge. Not just the sex trafficking, but making the people around you secure, transport, and distribute illegal substances, including ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, mushrooms, and Tucci on behalf of the billionaire. Okay? Now, while all of this was going on in the videos, we did see Justin... No, no, no. Yeah, was it Justin and... Christian, we saw them handcuffed outside of the house. His girlfriend, Raven, posts this video of them as all of this is going on. Do it again. Okay, so I'm like, there's sex trafficking involved. You know, your man's out here in handcuffs. Why are you posting y'all in a, like, sexually compromising moment? Like, it's just a tongue kiss, y'all. But it seems like, bitch, are you a bird brain? Why are you posting this right now? Like, he's literally handcuffed outside of the house. And we're talking about Rico and sex and sex trafficking. And you're like, let me show us the last time we was. (laughs) Girl. You got to get smart hoes. Like, you can't be, if you're going to be doing illegalities, you can't be out here with dumb hoes. You know what I'm saying? And no disrespect to the young lady, but it's giving dumb ho. You know what I'm saying? Girl, why are you posting that? You need to be somewhere looking modest and acting like, you know, Christian is always on the up and up. Girl, where's the prayer for his safety? <laughs> y'all want to talk about somebody need to pray for the kids. Akbar V and all of y'all. What about his kids? First of all, his kids are grown. Second of all, I can't care more about his kids than he cares about his kids because he left his kids there to be traumatized and handcuffed while he was somewhere in Opalaka walking on the water thinking heavy and shit. So at the end of the day, I don't think Diddy really cares about his kids that much. Yes, he wants the sign that his penis was here. Okay, and I think having all of those beautiful children just enlarges his ego even more so. I think that's what it's really about. It's not really about loving and paying attention to those children, because if that was the case, again, Lori Harvey, (laughs) you love your kids. Lori Harvey, you know what I'm saying? I also feel like Diddy is the old nigga that don't want to let go. 
his sons were supposed to be able to follow up behind him and take over bad boy. And, you know, he was supposed to retire and let them take over. But what did he do? He didn't retire. He got a new hairline. He colored his hair and his beard with the Beijing. He went and got young Miami. And now all of a sudden the kids got to wait a little bit longer. And now the kids probably won't even get what they would have got had he retired before the pandemic. I think if he would have stayed kind of in his brother love retirement phase, Maybe some of this shit wouldn't have happened like that. But Diddy wanted to be out there, you know, dancing in the videos and shit once again. And, well, you didn't did wrong to too many people as far as I'm concerned. I don't even understand how so many people are online defending Diddy when we have such a history of Diddy taking advantage of his artists, taking advantage of the people from the band. I know a lot of y'all might be too young to remember the band, but that was when we realized that Diddy wasn't shit. Diddy had them, them people walking from burrow to burrow to get shit. He could get somebody to go pick up quickly just because he wanted to humble them because he had to let them know that they ain't shit. If you actually go and watch any old episodes of Making a Band, I think it's very obvious the way he treats people and how he really ain't shit. But y'all going to think because he got all this money and because y'all been dancing in the videos and shit to him since the 90s that he's a good guy. I don't think he's a good guy. And I think y'all are weird for thinking that even after all of the evidence we've seen. And, yeah, no, I don't need to be a perfect person in order to feel like somebody like Diddy needs to go down. Like, I feel like it, it should, yeah, yeah, yeah. Him and all of the rest of them that are abusive to the community that they sweat up and down, that they care about and they love. But if they really cared about the community, they wouldn't be doing some of this shit that they doing. So I don't want to hear nothing from y'all about, oh, black people, black people. No, 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 no. Because y'all don't care when people hurt the black community. Y'all only care when somebody that's hurting the black community is being held accountable. And now y'all want everybody to give a fuck about the fact that he black. He don't care about that. So why should we? Now, let's go through all of the people that want to make, uh, you know, allowances and, and they still love Diddy. And guess what? Before you play it. I'm going to tell you right now, every single one of them, I think y'all did whatever he did. I think y'all was involved. And I think that's why y'all are out here talking about how he's a great guy and speaking up on his behalf. Because he got video of your ass, too. Run it. Child, let me tell y'all something. Stevie is out there getting girls pregnant on purpose so that he could leave them in the dust. I absolutely think he did what the girl said. There's some random girl on the internet talking about he got her pregnant on purpose just so he could leave her, you know, stranded. I believe that. Because, like, look at what he did to Jocelyn. Like, you was out here all in her, skeeting all in her. You was doing all of that. She ended up pregnant. You gonna ask her who the baby for he ain't shit neither. And as y'all heard from Lil Rod, he may not have been the person in the video, but he I think he's absolutely involved. I think Diddy knows whenever he want to do a freak off, he can call on Stevie J. Because Stevie J is one of the big black cocks. Let's go to Tyrese. Oh, goodness. Goodness gracious, you guys. Tyrese. I'm tired of Tyrese. You know, I wish Tyrese cared about his children and the women who have had children for him, I wish he cared about those people more than he cares about men who probably would leave him out to dry if they had to. But this is what Tyree said. What I can't do and what I won't do is downplay the laughter, the fun, the energy, the inspiration, the award shows, the studio sessions. So you spend a lot of time with him, huh, Tyrese? You spent a lot of time with him, Tyrese. He got you on video, huh? Anyway, I'm sorry. Let me continue on this. He says, um, the studio sessions, the most legendary parties and events I've ever attended in my life. I also can't act as if my high school backyard parties throughout South Central L.A. wasn't the craziest parties ever because of the bad boy on slew of hit records. I don't condone, nor do I, child, he don't know nothing about periods and, and commas or nothing. I'm sorry. He says that he doesn't condone nor support the abuse, bullying, sexual assault, or anything 
anything that is currently being alleged, but I can't, but what I can't do is turn the blinds on how much this means to me and all of us and what he has done for the community of music and culture. <laughs> don't worry. You mean like taking advantage of people, stealing their money, taking the rights to their records, assaulting them, making it hard for them to work in this industry? Or, as we'll get to Torrey's story, taking opportunities away from the kids because they don't want to give him any booty. Do you mean that? Because to me, that don't sound like a good guy. That don't sound like somebody that's doing shit out the kindness of their heart. That sound like somebody that does things so he can get something in return, like some young man's ass. And if that young man don't want to give it to him, then Diddy is snatching opportunities. That doesn't make him a good guy for me, okay? But let's continue on. What else did Tyree's dumbass say? Um, he says that it's very normal for people to be going through a rough patch. And we all sit back and make a mockery of it. Child, this is not a rough patch. This is a long time coming. Where have y'all been? I think y'all are really being delusional about this situation. The, the writing has been on the wall about Diddy for years, for years. Like, what's wrong with y'all? Where do y'all live at? Tyrese is definitely giving apologists because he's probably on video somewhere. I think anybody defending Diddy is scared that Diddy might put something out about them. He might want to drag the rest of y'all niggas down with him in order to protect himself. That's why all of y'all jumping online to make sure the community is supporting somebody that's been taking advantage of the community for 30 years. Go ahead. Play Slim Thug. I don't want to see a black man who came so far, almost to a billion dollars, fall down. That's our inspiration for It ain't too many of us. I don't want to see. They took Kanye down. We forgot about Kanye. And the good thing he uh, able to do his own man. That's how I look at it, man. We losing another billionaire over allegations at this point. Still ain't no criminal charges. You know what I'm saying? We only got about one billion out left. Who, Jay-Z? That's the only motherfucker left. Everybody else. Let's take the per off of it and, and who that person is, right? Take the personal shit off. Man, listen. What? If Look at who is wishing this dude fail. You know what I'm saying? It's his own people. It's his own people cheering him, laughing, and Diddy did it, and coming up with new slogans for him. No it's his own people, man. Like, so take note of this. Man, you would think the mother... He thought a year or two ago when we were popping Ciroc, he thought that we would ride or die for him, man. Like, he thought that the motherfucking world of hip-hop would stay down and over, you know, especially without him having a case. Like, especially without him having a case, he would think, hey, man, the motherfucker, they're gonna ride for me. I, I live for this hip-hop. You mean it, like the $30 million dollar case? The hip hop community is gonna ride for my innocence. He would assume, I'm sure. Say if he did that, then whatever he get, he get. But so far, I haven't seen no criminal charges. So out for that, I'ma just sit back and hope for the best. You know, I don't want to see nobody go down, man. And for people to celebrate that, love that, want to see that, it's weird to me, man. So like, it made me want to stay in the house. Please and people do. you would never, never knew they existed. Want to see this man, whatever. If you if if you work for me, if if I uh came up under you and you over me, fuck you. I don't want to do no business with you. Fuck you. I don't want to see you in the streets. But do I want to see you go to jail for life, nigga? Like you help me be a part of my play, regardless if I like you not. I'm gonna tell you why this is so problematic to me. You got mace. You got shine. I mean, allegedly the situation will pop, but you have so many situations that show you that Diddy is not just, oh, this kind black billionaire that we all need to be riding and dying. Girl, riding and dying? Riding and dying, girl, that is so 1995. I'm not riding and dying. Why would we ride or die for somebody we don't know? As you just said, none of us know Diddy, but we're praying for his downfall. Ain't nobody praying for Diddy's downfall but the people he's harmed. Those are the people that were praying for his downfall. Mace was on his show talking about how he's so glad he was able to get out of that situation and he didn't lose anything. This is a grown man telling you that he needed to get away from Diddy. And another thing, like, did Slim Thug miss the whole $30 million Cassie lawsuit? This nigga paid the money the next day. He paid it the next day.
next day. So you need criminal charges in order for you to believe he was doing some shit that, that is really foul. Even after all of the shit with making a band, even after all of the stuff with Shine, the stuff with Biggie, like there's the, the shootings at the club, you let Shine take the fall for you. Like all of this stuff that has taken, people's lives have been ruined because of Diddy. People's careers have been ruined because of Diddy. People's assholes have probably been ruined because of Diddy. And all y'all care about is protecting him and riding or dying for him, even though we don't know him and he don't give a shit about none of us. Run Torrey's video, please. I was personally disturbed many years ago, okay? I, I, I know this man well enough to call him and say, hey, I need a favor. Yeah. And this might have been 10, 12 years ago that I called him and say, hey, I have a family member who I want you to hire them as an intern. Yeah. And uh, I have never talked about this publicly. And I not. and he said yes. And they were flying around, one of the interns, Atlanta, Miami, whatever, on the jet, in the house, whatever. And then the internship stopped abruptly, like three or four months into it. Yeah. And I spoke to my family member, like, well, what happened? And they wouldn't say. Yeah. And I'm like, what, what do you, why did it end? He wouldn't yeah. say. And years later, they finally came out, and this is a male, yeah. and said that uh, Puff had said, come home, stay the night with me, or the internship is over. And they said, absolutely not. He said, absolutely not. Uh -huh. And the internship ended. Uh, but from there, I was like, oh, like, oh, this is, this is how it goes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's somebody that's good for the community? Somebody that you think is a homeboy that you could trust with your family and they basically say, if you don't give me your booty hole, I'm not going to help you with, with, with what I'm trying to help you with. That's a good person. That's somebody that care about the black community. Man, miss me with that bullshit y'all talking about online. Akbar V, Tyrese, Slim Thug, all of y'all miss me with it. Because anybody that'll take advantage of people that are coming to him for help like that is not a good person. And it ain't somebody we need to be defending. It's somebody we need to be sitting there looking at like, this ain't got nothing to do with us, y'all. We just gonna watch and see what happened. But if you've been paying attention in hip hop, if you've been paying attention over the past 30 years to what's happened with this man, this has just been a long time coming. And that's not the only story. I know a personal story about a model who was going, who was at his house modeling for Sean John way back in the early 2000s. And Diddy allegedly slid in the bed with this man. So I've been knowing about Diddy and the way he liked to roll up on people for years. And also, if y'all have paid attention to him when he's too loaded to pay attention to what he's doing, he in videos with, with uh, Baby from, you know, from Hot Boys, New Orleans, Baby, Big Timers. Y'all know Brian B. Bubba, you can call me with your feel, popping out the Platinum Hummer with the Platinum Grill. Y'all know them? Okay, yeah, there's a whole video of them online, and it looks to me like Baby, somebody who I know is not to be played with, is nervous around this nigga. Okay, like, he touching me too much. He telling me I'm too fat. Like, he like, you need to lose weight. Why? So you can fuck him? You want him to lose weight so you can... You, you, we at the end of the video. I should be all right. But <laughs> at the end of the day, y'all, I've heard personal stories. We've seen things online. People have been talking about Diddy for years. Cassie got $30 million in 24 hours based off of the evidence she has against this man. And everything Lil Rod has said has been coming to fruition ever since he did his lawsuit. So I don't know what everybody's paying attention to, but I feel like y'all get so caught up in these celebrities. Y'all get so caught up and feeling like because somebody, you know, copied an old record and made a good jam for you. Don't get me wrong. Y'all, More Money, More Problems is one of my favorite albums, and Biggie is my favorite rapper. So please understand, I broke up with Diddy a few years ago, girl. I broke up with Diddy some years ago because I had to let him go. I used to love him too, y'all. I used to, ain't nobody gonna hold me down. Oh, no, I got to, look, take that, take that, all of that, okay? I was a fan, y'all, but at the end of the day, you got to be real with yourself, and y'all got to stop letting people you know, gash your head up, they're a celebrity or whoever they are and you allow them to hurt the community, hurt you, hurt the people around you, hurt the kids, hurt the women, hurt the children, hurt the men, everybody. Nobody's booty hole is safe. And y'all out here defending him. Man, 
y'all wildin'. All I know is I feel like once the federally hood got tapped in, <laughs> puffs going down, puffs going down, puffs going down, down, down. And I'm not happy about it, but I also feel like nobody should be able to be out here using their power to take advantage of people and messing over people for 30 years and staying on top. Why do you feel like he should be able to stay on top after all of the shit he's done? Something wrong with y'all. That's how I feel, okay? I'm Bondi Blue. You can find me on YouTube at Bondi Blue. You can find me on Unwind. Uh, I'm sorry, on Tasha K Live.com. And you can find me on Unwind with Tasha K because I'll be back, okay? But either way, I'm Bondi Blue on everything except for Twitter. I told y'all I was going to give y'all the right Twitter before I get out of here. It is Blue Rose Bondi on Twitter, okay? Blue Rose Bondi, all of the words spelled right, okay? Blue Rose Bondi on Twitter. Follow me because y'all know X be trying to make you pay for stuff, and I refuse to pay X, so they tried to take my page. So y'all make sure y'all follow my new one, and I hope y'all enjoyed the show. Um, Yes, Wine is the New Tea will be back tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern time with a, with a new set of characters for y'all talking about whatever's popping by the time we get to tomorrow morning, okay? So y'all make sure y'all come back to Unwind with Tasha K for more content. Go to TashaK.live for the exclusive content. And don't forget about Tasha K on stage touring all over the place for y'all, all right? I love y'all. I appreciate y'all wine nose, and I hope to see y'all next time. Mwah.